training's going really well. Um, we stood away in Mallorca for 11 days with Endura Racing Road Team. Mallorca's a great place to ride and got 10 days of solid, really solid training out there. A bit with those guys, but quite a lot on my own. And I've been having another training block lately, real hard power stuff, real hard stuff in the gym and putting some real power through the pedals on the bike with a bit of volume, so. And then um, off to Cyprus. That's a three-day stage race. Um, it's a higher category ranked race. World champion's gonna be there. Three or four guys from the top, four, five or six guys from the top 10, 15 in the world. The race is gonna be stacked with the World Cup starting early. Everyone's looking to race early. Back when I did this injury or even a few months ago, I never envisaged or that I would be racing in Cyprus against those guys. So it's six months having, after six months having hurt myself and did this injury to be taking on competing in a high level race like that is um, beyond my expectations and I think most other people's as well. So it's um, yeah, all good. I first um, came across Ollie after his injury, August 2011, and he'd um, sustained what we call an intracapsular fracture neck of femur. The problem with the hip is that, and I've got a model of a right hip here, um, the hip ball part of the hip joint, the head as we call it, um, is supplied by blood um, from three sources, one of which is very minor, a ligament inside, and that's more um, prevalent in children. In the adult, however, there are two main sources. Uh, inside the bone itself, the intraosseous supply, which in any break is interrupted. So then the patient's relying on the third and remaining blood supply, which is in the back of the hip joint here, fibres, blood vessels rather, which run up the posterior or, or back side of the femoral neck here. Um, the trouble is, um, if you have an intracapsular, in other words, a fracture uh, inside this structure here called the capsule, which contains those blood supply, they get torn. Um, and uh, then the theoretical risk of the fracture not healing uh, and the blood supply to the head leading to, to death of the bone and collapse of the hip leading to arthritis is quite high. Uh, so it's a, uh, it's a tricky treatment. Ollie uh, has received a, um, a, what we call a dynamic hip screw, which is a, a screw into the femoral head. Uh, the fracture goes across here, across the femoral neck. The screw goes across the fracture site and is held in place with a, what we call a barrel plate. The nice thing about this device is it offers support for the fracture, allows the fracture to be compressed with Ollie's weight bearing, uh, and that stimulates and speeds up the healing process. With Ollie wanting to return to his sport, um, wanting to maintain his muscle mass, strength, and rehabilitate as quickly as possible, it leads to a quandary. We can't take him too quickly because the fixation may fail and then we're in all sorts of trouble having to redo the operation, but we don't take it too slowly uh, because the muscles uh, will become very weak and take that much longer to rehabilitate. And so it was a fine line um, to walk. So Ollie really spent six weeks on crutches touch weight bearing really, so little let weight through the leg, and then a short period, perhaps two to four weeks of half weight bearing through the leg with the aid of crutches. During that time, he had the benefit of uh, the My Life uh, rehab team, who, um, who did some very structured um, muscle rehab without loading the hip too, too, um, too greatly. Uh, so preserving our fixation uh, and, and our bony continuity whilst uh, still allowing the muscles to, uh, to improve their strength uh, and avoid scarring. I would have thought, compared to the traditional patient with this injury, he was maybe two to three months ahead of the curve.